The following are time slip stories where ordinary people leading ordinary lives are suddenly transported into another time, dimension, or reality, where everything they believed in up to that point in their life is completely challenged and the life would never be the same. Lee Dean, Kentucky. On March the 15th, 2011 at 3.15 p.m., Lee decided to check inside the old law office building, where his family had once practiced law, but was now empty. He decided to check the building for damage because he'd heard that a nearby factory had been doing some blasting a few months earlier and was checking to see if the building had been damaged in any way. The building was very old and dated back to pre-Civil War. He entered through the back door and then headed upstairs. He first entered his mother's old room, then into his old office, no damage, and then checked his brother's old room, still no damage. The last room was the library and found it was badly damaged. The ceiling had collapsed and the wood was exposed, but fortunately, no water damage. He then went downstairs to check the kitchen. That was okay. And then walked up into the secretary's room and then his late father's old office. Both were okay. As he entered the waiting room, he found there was a lot of damage to the walls where the plaster had fallen away. Again, the wood was exposed, but no water damage. He then went home and called the neighbour that did house repairs. Then Lee and his neighbour went back to the old law office to assess the damage. They walked through the building in the same order that Lee had previously checked. To their surprise, there was no damage whatsoever. He was totally dismayed. He knew what he'd seen a few hours earlier, and he told his neighbour that his only explanation was that he had somehow walked into the past. He remembered that there had been wall damage back in 1969, where they had to replaster all the walls. He believed that He'd walked back into the building as it was in 1969, 50 years previously. He tried to figure out what had just happened. Maybe it was just residual energy, but he was certain that he had checked all the rooms twice and some of them were damaged and the event had somehow left an imprint. Obviously, the factory blasting had nothing to do with the damage because the damage was from natural wear and tear and from a different time half a century ago. Henderson Henderson was driving down a dirt road and had become lost when all of a sudden an old 1940s vintage car flew past him at high speed. There was a sharp curve up ahead and due to the car's speed it failed to take the turn and shot off into a field of kudzu. He was less than 250 feet from the car when it left the road and Henderson thought wow some fool has just wrecked a classic car. He got out of the car to check on the accident and initially had trouble trying to locate it amongst the wild kudzu. Then all of a sudden, he came upon the car and found that it was completely rusted. The tyres had perished and they were hanging in pieces and the kudzu had grown all over the rusted out body. The car had aged 50 years in about 20 seconds. He had somehow seen a car wreck 50 years after it had happened. He quickly jumped back into his car and left in a panic. Frank Fresh, New Jersey. In 2014, Frank's 17-year-old son and 19-year-old daughter were living in Fairfield, New Jersey with their mother. Frank and his wife had separated and Frank now lived in Lyndhurst, New Jersey, about 40 miles away. One day, his son and daughter jumped into their 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee decided to visit their father, a trip they had taken on many occasions. On this particular trip, his kids swore they had not touched a drop of alcohol or taken any drugs, and his daughter did not believe in the paranormal. As they exited Route 21, around 5.30pm, which at the time was rush hour, they waited to make a left to cross the Nutley Lyndhurst Bridge. As the lights turned green, they turned and found they were now heading west towards the bridge. As soon as the jeep's front tyres had hit the metal grating on the bridge, in an instant, they suddenly realised they were now heading in the complete opposite direction, east, which was about three blocks away from the bridge in Nutley. They both looked at each other, and in a panic, 
He just slammed on the brakes in the middle of the two-lane traffic, causing the traffic behind them to beep their horns in anger. Totally bewildered, they pulled the car over into the nearest parking lot next to a small park. At the same time, they just looked at each other and screamed. What the hell just happened? They realized that in a split second, they were somehow transported a few blocks away in the opposite direction. They then jumped out of the car totally confused. After managing to compose themselves, they continued their journey to their fathers. They knew he would believe their story because he was into the paranormal. On arriving at their father's house, they blurted out their amazing experience, where Frank claimed that, judging by the looks on their faces, they were both horrified and frightened. Frank also felt a bit jealous of their experience because he was the one who believed in the paranormal. His daughter distinctly said to him that she could not believe this happened to her because she's never believed in that kind of stuff until now. They immediately returned to the spot and tried to recreate exactly what had happened, where Frank was hoping to relive their experience, but nothing happened. When they got back to Frank's, they quickly googled about the bridge at Nutley to see if anyone else had experienced something strange there, but there was nothing. Frank was hoping that someone reading this blog might have happened to see a white Jeep Cherokee disappear in front of their eyes one summer day in 2014. Glen, Oklahoma. Glen became interested in time slips after the following bizarre event happened to him in 2007. He had just left Duncan, Oklahoma, headed for Comanche, Oklahoma, and decided to take some back roads to Comanche through Empire, Oklahoma. As he was driving, he could see a thunderstorm was approaching and thought he'd better get home quickly. As he drove onto Empire Road, he suddenly found that it was no longer paved, but was now a gravelly dirt road. He figured he'd suddenly made a wrong turn and continued driving along the dirt road. As he was traveling along the road, he noticed a gas station that he'd never seen before. It had old gas pumps that looked as if from the 1950s and there were old hubcaps hanging on the walls of the gas station. Nearby were some mobile homes that looked old-fashioned as if from the 1970s. As he looked around, he also noticed the vehicles that were parked in front of the mobile homes. They looked like they were from the 1960s or 70s, and they were in mint condition. Although he was fascinated at what he was seeing, it was almost dark, and he felt he needed to get home quickly before the storm hit. Suddenly, the weather appeared to ease slightly as he continued to drive on the dirt road that he thought was Empire Road. As he drove, the road appeared to go on endlessly and he was feeling uneasy because nothing around him was in the slightest bit familiar. He turned down another road hoping to get back onto a paved road or at least into familiar surroundings. But all he could see was more dirt roads and those old-fashioned mobile homes. He then headed back to the gas station with the old gas pumps and the old hubcaps hanging on the wall. He had not seen old hubcaps like that since he was a kid. He then spotted an old Coke machine that was full of glass bottles and not cans. Although everything was lit up, it was very quiet. There was nobody around. There was also an old 1950s light blue pickup truck parked out front. As he continued down the road, he figured that, by the types of cars and houses he was observing, it appeared to be sometime in the 1970s. He continued driving down different dirt roads to try and find a way out of the maze, and he continued driving for what seemed an hour. He then stopped his car and just sat there for a while, totally frustrated, and thought he'd try and give it one more go. He looked up ahead and could just see where the gravel road turn into a paved road. He drove on, and once his eyes hit the paved road, the storm suddenly returned. And as he looked behind him, he noticed the mobile homes had disappeared. It was now raining, and he was anxious to find Highway 81 and get back home. He finally reached the highway and hurried home. A few days later, and with clearer weather, he decided to head back down Empire Road to try and locate the dirt road the service station, old cars, and mobile homes. When he finally reached Empire Road, he found it was all paved and could not find any dirt roads. 
he tried to locate the old gas station, but it was not there. However, he did come across an empty field with bits of old concrete that would once have been the foundation for the service station. He was now scratching his head trying to figure out whether he had driven down the wrong road or whether it was the right road but at the wrong time. Empire Road, as it was in the 1970s, even the mobile homes were gone, where some had been replaced with newer homes. He decided to ask around about Empire Road and when it was last a dirt road, and they said it was paved back in the 1980s. He asked about the old gas station, and an old-timer told them that there was a gas station there, but it was torn down in 1987. The last time it was a service station was in 1981. As with many time slips that people experience, there is never anyone around, and there was always a deathly silence. <laughs>